Hey guys, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick. I hope you're all doing well and had a better trading week than I did. Thank God the markets were closed for Good Friday, otherwise this would be even harder to film. Chances are, if you were long this week, you crushed it. And if you were a loser on the short side, you got crushed. As Trump said, this was the largest stock gain in a week since 1974, with S&P up 12.1% and the Dow up 12.7. We're now nearly 25% off the lows from March 23rd, and just about everyone's bullish now. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I don't think much has changed since last week. On Monday, the supposed meeting between OPEC and Russia to cut oil productions never happened, and that's what rallied the market last week. But oil stocks rose the entire week. Marathon oil was up 13%, and Exxon was up 10. Thankfully, I got in some calls on Marathon Oil on Monday to offset my short position risk, but this was one of the only wins I had this week. Tuesday saw the market open up 3.8%, but then the stocks fell throughout the day and the market closed basically flat. So I took this as a sign that the market rally was at its end, but Wednesday and Thursday saw much higher prices. Then on Thursday, unemployment numbers came out. An additional 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits. Unemployment numbers are now a bullish indicator, as the last three weeks saw record high unemployment and the market move higher. The expected unemployment numbers was supposed to be around 5 million, but it was 6.6 .6 instead. Didn't matter, because the S&P 500 jumped 1.5%. But as long as the Fed keeps making that money printer go burr, the stocks will go up. But people are starting to get sick of this. Like the CEO from Social Capital. He argued that, well, just watch. But are, are you suggest you keep saying propping up zombie companies? Are, are you are you arguing to let airlines, for example, fail? Yes. Why? I mean, how, how does that make sense in the broader scheme of, of the economy? That clip's amazing and I could watch it all day. I had my largest losing week of any of my recaps and I'm not even looking for a bailout. But I'm not going to say no to the stimulus check that should be deposited in your accounts within the next week. If you're confused on how much money you're supposed to be getting and how it gets to you, Watch the video that I made on the stimulus check and the federal student debt freeze. Look, winning weeks are great for your account, but they often lead to you taking too large of a position size or making other trading mistakes in the following week. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was heavy on the short side going into this week with puts on Spy, Nike, and Starbucks. Instead of realizing that the prices were moving against my positions and just cutting the losses there, I froze and just watched the losses pile up. By the end of Monday, my account was down $1,750. Looking back on it, I was caught trading with emotions. Well, not trading with emotions. So going forward, in the mornings, I'm gonna have prices to get in and out of any position that I have before the market opens. If you're trying to make a game plan while the market's open and the stocks are moving around, you're more likely to be trading with emotions and losing money from it. This was a tough hit to my account, but my last losing week led to the largest gains I've had by following a plan. Another trading rule that I broke that cost me $1,600 was adding to a losing position. Silly me, I thought Kohl's being 40% off its lows when the economy still closed was a good time for puts. I bought 10 puts on Monday when Kohl's was up 20%. That didn't work out for me because on Tuesday it jumped up another 20%. During Tuesday's trading day, instead of just cutting these losses, I compounded the position by buying another 10 puts at a higher strike price. But I was wrong again. On Wednesday it closed up 3%. And then on Thursday, it was up an additional 21% in the morning. But instead of cutting my losses there, I bought 10 more puts with a strike of $20. Thankfully, those last 10 puts I bought were at the high of the day, so they're in the green. But this was a really stupid thing to do. For four months, I was doing such a good job at not adding to losers. We'll see how this goes next week, but my plan is if the stock makes a high over Friday's high, I'm out, I'm just cutting my losses. If you're a short-term trader like myself, adding to a losing position almost always leads to larger losses. And the larger position size that you have on, the harder it is to cut these losses because you're trading with more emotion. So I went through my trading journal that you can find in the description below next to the like and subscribe buttons to see how much money I would have saved if I just cut all my losses at $500. $2,300 I would have saved. So going forward, I'm cutting any loss at $500 and not looking back. Losses happen. They're part of trading. But if you can't face your losses and learn from them, you're gonna be making the same mistakes over and over again. Outside of the Kohl's puts that I talked about, I'm not holding anything over the weekend. So I'm gonna hold off on the technical analysis part of this video. I did find a great video that shows using technical analysis why the market hasn't bottomed yet. Check it out. Uh, hey guys, just got back from my positive affirmations class and I wanted to show you some technical analysis I've been learning. I, I just found out if you take the 2007 recession 2008 recession and you compress the graph and then you overlay the 2020 uh, 
COVID crash, you'll actually see that there's a lot of similarities going on here. Um, if we take the my, my little indicator here, we can see same top, we got the same little first bounce and we can even see that even these parts in the bottom and the and the bounce here, they're all exactly the same. Um, in fact, the graph is completely identical uh, in every way that I can tell. And so I'm predicting that if we take the top here, um, we're going to see it really leg down over this this part. So I'm thinking get get some of those those puts. And uh, I did the math, and turns out if this whole thing is 2020. Um, this point here is actually uh, about 125 uh, on on the spider, so I think that's going to be a good target. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in to Stock Tricks with Nick. If you were profitable this week, leave a like. And if you're a loser like me, comment below what trade you took that lost the most money and what you learned from it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel where I make weekly trading recaps like this and personal finance videos to help save you or make you money. Also make sure you turn on the notification button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Stay healthy and I'll see you next week.